to another Virginia Living Museum live stream. My name is Britt and I'm an aquarist here at the Living Museum. Uh, and today we're going to be showing you our meal prep or diet prep for our fishes and sharks here at the museum. Um, so we've got a lot of different animals to feed. You can see up on our feeding board up here, we have uh, quite a range of, of tanks to feed every single day. Uh, this list does not include every tank that we feed. You can see underneath the uh, days of the week, there's daily and then all EXH. Those are alternating uh, daily boxes and all exhibit boxes of food. So today, we're gonna be making food for all exhibits. So the daily boxes are just fish that need to be fed every single day, but not every fish has to be fed every single day. Uh, so every other day, uh, sometimes a little bit less often than that, we will be feeding all of our fish. Um, and you'll be able to see that in these boxes here today. So we've got some larger uh, for fish that need a lot more food or much larger pieces. And then for all of our smaller tanks, we have these uh, tackle boxes that we have repurposed into little feeding trays where we go around and we will pick up uh, each animal's uh, amount of food and put it into the tank. So these are obviously not completed boxes yet. There's a lot left to complete. But I have started uh, putting in some mysis, which is this very, very small type of shrimp. You can see it's very tiny. There's one mysis right there on the tip of my finger. Uh, and that is really good for a lot of our smaller fish, our fish that are growing, juveniles, and seahorses. Seahorses really love mysis. It's one of the primary things that we feed them here at the museum. Um, and so I'm going to be cutting up a bunch of different things here. And you can see over here we've got some more of our foods. Uh, so we've got this right here, which is called gel, and I'll be using that to feed to several of our different animals, uh, including our invertebrates. We've got squid here. There's lots of nice, delicious looking squid, full squid with heads and tentacles and everything. And then we've got something kind of special today. These are called ballyhoo. Yeah. And they are uh, a kind of more of a bait fish here. We don't really catch them to eat as people, but animals do really like them. And these were actually donated not even an hour ago. It was less than an hour ago. They were donated by our seafood supplier, Sam Rust, who supplies all of our seafood here at the museum uh, and very generously sends us donations every once in a while. Um, and let's see, they also gave us they give us today. Uh, they give us catfish. This is a big fillet of catfish here. And then we've got some rainbow trout here, which some of you might be familiar with eating. It's very, very tasty. Uh, and some smelt. And this is kind of a multi-purpose food. It's, uh, it is a saltwater and a freshwater fish, so we can feed it to both our freshwater and saltwater species. Typically, we prefer to feed uh, saltwater food to saltwater animals because it has the right balance of amino acids and protein and all the nutrients that a saltwater animal might need, which may be different from freshwater ones. So we try to keep it kind of separated. Freshwater fish get freshwater food, saltwater fish get saltwater food. Do you have a question? So we do have a question already from Shelby, age 10, wants to know what do sea turtles eat? What do sea turtles eat? So we currently don't have a sea turtle at the moment, but we have cared for sea turtles in the past. Sea turtles eat a variety of different things, uh, and over the course of their lifespan, they'll actually change their diet. So a lot of sea turtles start off eating a lot more protein, a lot more fish, and then they gradually change to more of a vegetarian diet as they get older. Uh, some species, like the green sea turtle, only eat vegetation for pretty much their whole lives. Uh, and then some even eat live jellyfish. So uh, it's very important if you are uh, conscious about the environment not to put any plastic bags out into the world and to make sure that you dispose of them properly. Because uh, plastic bags look a lot like jellyfish when they're floating in the water. So always keep that in mind and try your best not to litter. So I'm chopping up some capelin right now. And Caitlin is a member of the smelt family, which we talked about a little bit earlier. You got a question? We got another question. Alyssa, age eight, wants to know what the sharks eat. What the sharks eat. So the sharks also eat a variety of things. And uh, I'm actually going to make them uh, a bit of food right now. So they're going to get actually whole pieces of Caitlin. This is the whole fish. Uh, and we'll give one to each of our sharks. We try to give them a variety of different things. So now I'm gonna be cutting up a piece of cod. So this is a big, thick slab of cod, which is another fish that humans really like to eat. So I'm gonna cut them each a nice big chunk of cod for them today. 
Uh, we'll give them some squid as well over here. And they are large enough that they can actually eat the whole squid, head and all. Lovely, lovely things right here. And the ballyhoo. So they've never really, well, these particular sharks have probably never had ballyhoo uh, at our aquarium here. But they're going to try some out today. So I'm just going to cut the head off. See that? And this is also my first time cutting up ballyhoo, so I'm taking a nice little look at it, trying to see there's a bunch of organs in there. That's very nice, very nutritious for our, our animals. So I'm actually going to cut that and save it for somebody else. We do have a question from Savannah, age nine, wants to know which of our animals that we have eats the most? Which eats the most? Ooh. The seahorses eat the most frequently. Uh, they don't eat a lot of food per feeding because they are very small animals, but they do need to eat the most often. So by one definition, it'd be the seahorses. That's tough. I'm not gonna feed out the tail because there's not really much in that. Um, but our Chesapeake Bay tank, they eat a large quantity of food, but there's so many fish in that tank that they may not get a ton of food each. The sharks eat quite a bit, but they only get fed about once a week, sometimes a little bit more than that. Uh, Celia, so age seven, would like to know if the shark can eat the pointy nose on the ballyhoo. They probably can, but uh, I am going to cut the heads off of the ballyhoo for all of these because it is a very tough thing. You can see it's not really, not really bendable and I don't want there to be any chance of them to be potentially hurt by this. And a lot of very tough parts of the fish and parts of shrimp, uh, such as the shell or the head, uh, they don't actually digest that part very well. So they may eat the whole item and then digest the parts that are easily digestible and then uh, excrete the rest. So sometimes when we're cleaning our tanks, we'll see bits of like shell from a shrimp uh, or some larger bones from certain fish. So in an effort to just keep our tanks a little cleaner, we make sure to cut off the harder to digest parts. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of freshwater food prep for our James River tank. Uh, they are gonna get a good, good large amount of food as well because there are a lot of fish in there. And I'm just gonna get this piece out of the way, give that to our Chesapeake Bay tank. So this right here is a big chunk of catfish. It's a relatively fatty food. People really like catfish. Um, and it is a little bit different than most foods that we eat because it has a different uh, omega uh, acid in it. So uh, we typically know that fish is good for you because it has omega-3 in it. However, catfish and certain other fish have omega-6. So it's still good for you, but it may not be quite as good as those omega-3 fish. Yes. We have a really great question from KH10. Would like to know what the yellow stuff inside the fish in the beginning of the video oh, was. Good question. You were paying attention. So in here, you can see there's all this little yellow stuff right here. So this is actually fish eggs. So these are capelin eggs. And I can show you one in here as well. Put that to the side. I'm going to cut the head off and I will cut open the belly right here. And you'll be able to see she is full of eggs. So this was a female capelin. Uh, and we can kind of feel from the outside which ones have eggs in them because it's a little like squishy in a different way than normal organs. Uh, and we don't feed this to a lot of our animals because most of them are too big to really pay attention to this food and they're gonna eat other stuff. But when they're very, very small or when they're jellyfish or jellies, which they're actually more accurately called, they love to eat little fish eggs. What we do is we make what's called a slurry for our jellyfish. So, excuse me, jellies. I'm so used to calling them jellyfish that even I sometimes mess it up. So even though they are jellies, sometimes, you know, sometimes we mess up too. We're here. Um, with the jellies, we make kind of a slushy for them, it's called a slurry. All right, so I am cutting up some of this catfish and I'm gonna cut some of it also into strips, uh, whereas Patricia over there is also cutting some food into strips there. And that food is gonna go to uh, animals that eat an omnivore diet. So it's got both fish protein and lots of algae in it. So it's very, very good for a variety of fishes. It's kind of a complete diet, but we always like to supplement their diets with as much fresh stuff as we possibly can. So I'm gonna put some of these strips right here, some of these longer strips of catfish into this container right here. This container has our guard. They have uh, visited us while we are at a swamp exhibit. They love long strips of food. So we also cut these pieces of food 
uh, into the right shapes for our animals. The gar have very, very long snouts, long mouths, so they like longer food that's kind of shaped more like a long fish, whereas other fish will eat chunks of food. Now we do have a question from Darvish, age seven. Um, I don't know that we'd be able to answer this directly because we don't have any octopus, but what does an octopus eat? Octopus love hard-bodied organisms, so they'll take advantage of whatever they can find. If there's a, a piece of dead fish or something, sure, they'll gladly eat that up. Uh, but octopi, octopuses, they really like hard stuff, so clams, shrimp, uh, mussels, scallops, things like that. They really love those hard-bodied organisms, but like I said, they'll eat anything they can really get their hands on. All right, I've got some fun stuff here as well, but first, we've got a very useful little guide here for you. All of our food is sustainably caught and sustainably harvested is what it's typically called, um, which means that it is caught in such a way that it is not uh, very detrimental. So uh, we try to only use seafood that is sustainably caught because it is much better for the environment and the local species and the health of our entire planet and our oceans. So we don't wanna buy uh, fish that are over harvested, but people have caught too many of them uh, because that can cause a dramatic decline in populations out in the wild and remove those fish from pretty much the world. So we've got these little guides from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. This is called a Seafood Watch Guide. Uh, and they have an ongoing project that's really, really great in partnership with a lot of different aquariums, seafood uh, companies, NOAA, all sorts of things. Um, and they provide these little guides that say your best choices for seafood, your good alternatives, and things that you should avoid at the current time. So it's, they actually have an app online as well. You can also go to seafoodwatch.org for more information. Uh, and it's really useful for when you are at a restaurant trying to decide what fish to eat uh, or what fish to buy from a grocery store. So we have a question from Amy Elizabeth wants to know, uh, why can't you eat the fish's head? Why can't we, we definitely can't eat those fish's heads because they tend to be very bony and they have uh, a lot of hard bits in them that are hard for us to chew and digest. Uh, the fish also have kind of the same problem depending on the type of fish. Uh, they may not have the strongest stomach or the strongest jaws to be able to crunch through those things. So they don't want to swallow it whole. It'd be like us swallowing something whole that's far too large for our body. We do sometimes provide them with it, uh, depending on the species. Certain animals, uh, they benefit a lot uh, from having that little bit of extra bone uh, in their diet, that extra calcium. Um, and also sometimes it's a bit of a form of enrichment for them. So sometimes we'll give our crabs something with a lot of bones in it because they like to pick at all the meat that's around it rather than just eating the food that we throw in. So every day the diet's a little bit different it's very fun to do. It's one of our favorite parts of the day. Uh, we find it very relaxing. It's just like cooking at home. It's very kind of therapeutic. Darvish wants to know what do the jellies eat? The jellies today are eating, or tomorrow actually, this is food for tomorrow. They're going to be eating those very tiny fish eggs right here, as well as some very small chopped up mysis. And I may also throw in a little bit of other food, uh, such as the uh, crawfish tail meat, which will chop up very, very finely. So they eat very fine food that's put into kind of a slushy form. All right. Um, so uh, I think that about will wrap it up and we're gonna get cracking on all of this food right here. Um, so thank you guys very much for joining us this session. Uh, join us later at 2.30 this afternoon where Travis Land in the herpetology department uh, will be feeding the baby alligators. Very, very cute, so please do tune in. Uh, and be sure to visit us virtually with all of our natural education here on Facebook uh, and also on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok even. Uh, there's always complete updated information on our website, which is theblm.org. So that's T-H-E-B-L-M.org. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.